osmosis and intestine. So P Muska one writes, can you do a post on what you do to warm up before the men's ladder or other matches where you might have limited time before the match starts? And that's a great question. Um, like that's definitely one where it's very pertinent. But um, I'll let you know what I do and what sort of work for me. So first things first, um, hydrate beforehand. Hydrate at least 12 hours um, beforehand, so the day before. And the thing is, like, if you're waiting until you're thirsty during a match to start drinking, then that's too late. You're probably a little dehydrated um, already. So that, that's number one. Number two, uh, have your racket bag already packed uh, the night before your match. Um, I'm going to use my my wife's racket bag, for example. It's, it's always beautifully packed, uh, nicely arranged, all her towels, all her rackets and stuff, all in there. Mine, on the, on the other hand, like I'm always changing stuff, so I'm always swapping different rackets and restringing different rackets. So I need to make sure that I have all my stuff uh, packed the night before. Because during, during the day, right, during the day, like either, if I'm playing on a weekday, then I'm gonna be going to a match like right after I put the kids to bed. Or if it's on a weekend, then we have a bunch of Saturday activities from math to swim in with the kids. So I'm likely just gonna be going straight from an activity to my match. So last thing you want is to be forgetting like towels, especially if you're playing in indoor humid conditions. So do yourself a favor, pack the night before. So now come the game day, what do you do? Um, ideally, you should do some sort of warm-up routine at home before the match, if you have the time. Um, some things that I like doing are dynamic stretches. So, uh, one that I like doing is called the Broadway kick. So I'm just kicking forward and back, forward and back. Good. This really stretches out the hamstrings. You can do it slowly too, and slow really forces you to control the movement activates different muscles as well. Then you could do the sideways. So um, oftentimes if you're at the tennis courts, you could uh, lean on the um, tennis post or you could lean on the wall. Let's kick sideways. Yeah, this is a really good stretch for the groin. So um, yeah, so that's what I would do at home and then just jog in place as well. You know, get your heart moving. Um, get the, the blood flowing. And then next, um, car ride. So either you're, you're taking your car down there or uh, I don't know, you're, you're biking, whatever it may be, you're walking. And I kind of like to use this as my clear my mind time. And to use a foodie analogy, this is sort of your palate cleanser. And that whatever was going on before the day, right, it's no longer relevant now. But you're just thinking about, um, not only thinking about tennis, but just clearing your, your mind, just, just freeing yourself. And I, for me, like this is very important. So I, I like playing music in the car and turning down, uh, putting down the windows, singing loudly and just uh, letting it be. So by the time I get to the match, right? Um, ideally, you get there a few minutes before. Um, so you're in the lobby waiting for the bell to ring before your court time starts. And instead of like just uh, looking at your cell phone while you're in the lobby, use this time to do some additional dynamic stretches. So the same ones I mentioned with your kick in as well, right? Um, but then if you have access to a resistance band, then um, I really advocate doing stretches for your shoulder. So shoulder muscles is one where we use quite a bit, but I feel like you don't. At least for me, I don't warm it up nearly as much as I should. So this one we're going out, right? Keeping the elbow nice and tight in as we're taking this out about 90 degrees. Um, an additional one that you can do is, let's see if this is gonna work. I didn't demo this beforehand, but uh, let's see. Well, this is what happens when you do live demos, right? Okay. 
So the additional one that you could do is, uh, there it goes, I forgot. So I'm going to put the band here, right, put on my feet, and then reach up. One, good. So this band work really working that tricep, right, activating the tricep muscle, right. So a nice, good stretch. That was actually quite, quite hard. Maybe this band is a little bit too, too much resistance. But you can do the same thing with just your racket as well. I have a racket right here. A nice heavy racket. So I'm at 85. I'm gonna get on my knees so I don't bang up the racket. So stretch it up. Really work on getting that nice deep stretch and warming up that muscle. Cause you don't wanna go into a match and just start trying to hit that 120 mile an hour stair off the bat. Uh, you might hurt something. I'm speaking from experience here. All right, so we stretch this way, we stretch this way. Um, another stretch that you can do for your shoulder is right here. So we're basically, we have the band on the floor and we're just going, keeping the elbow probably level with your shoulder and rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, this is really good, I, I feel this right here. Right, so that's five minutes. Um, that would uh, lead you up into your match, walk into your match, greet your opponent, say hi, I'm gonna crush you today, whatever, you, whatever greeting that you made you. But instead of doing that greeting, then straight up going into the baseline and trying to hit the ball as hard as you possibly can, um, I'm gonna recommend two things. If you don't, if you have enough time, I recommend to do some calisthenics movements while you're on the court. So um, I'm gonna really make this look a very small tennis court right here. <laughs> Super small, all right? So do karaoke steps. Karaoke across, spread forward, karaoke the other way, right? Jog backwards, right? So that's one thing you could do a few rounds of that. Another, get down into your squat position, right? Then we're shuffling, high knees forward, shuffle, butt kicks backwards. So that's getting the legs moving, and that's really valuable because I've been just doing this now, like this like two minute video. I already feel like I, I'm, I'm warming up just a bit, right? And so I think those are um, things that to, to help you sort of get your mind ready, that we're clearing our mind beforehand. We're making sure that we're hydrated, making sure that our legs are warmed up, making sure that our shoulders are warmed up, especially if you have, if you're using a two-hander. Um, do the same thing uh, with your dominant as well as your um, non-dominant hand. So ideally, uh, you're, you're good, you're ready for the match, but I, I also feel like during uh, matches, like in reality, like the first few games that we're, we're playing are also a warm-up. And so in those first few games, um, one thing that I like to do is on my first serve, really try and get the first serve in. So instead of going for my hard uh, serve. I'm either kicking it in, maybe a, a heavy kick, or I'm doing like a um, three-quarter slice, you know, trying to get that, that serve in and really put put the pressure on your opponent to, to come with the goods on the return. And another thing I like to do is like, I throw a serve volley in there every once in a while, not saying that I'm supremely confident in my serve volley, but gets me, gets my legs moving, gets me thinking in that aggressive mindset of moving my legs. So, again, one thing that I like to do for, for some progress. And then on my return game, especially in the first or second game, I want to hit it down the middle, hit it with depth, not necessarily try and crack a win or anything, but just um, take the time away from your opponent because, I mean, they're still, like, they're still likely, they're still trying to warm up their serve and the hardest thing is for a opponent who is not necessarily as warmed up to be able to move out of the way of the ball and, and hit a good shot. So that's one way to sort of 
ease yourself into a, a early lead. And a lot of times in these matches that are time driven, like an early lead is all you need. And that like you afterwards your opponent may start to rush and then um, you got the, the set. So but all in all, have fun. Remember, you can control your effort and not necessarily the outcome. So have fun, put all that you can do, you can into preparation, into your attitude towards the match, and just have fun with it. It's, it's your time to, to play. So hopefully this was helpful, and thank you, Key Muska one for that question. Uh, this is Andy from Times with Andy. Play smart. See you.